Hello and welcome to the world of Neko Deco Pop and our official anime review wrap up of the spring 2023 anime season. There is a lot of really amazing anime this season and honestly I probably took on too many anime to watch but we made it work. So here are my thoughts on the spring 2023 anime season. First off, we have Skip and Loafer, which is a truly delightful anime that honestly came out of nowhere. I'm usually pretty hit or miss when it comes to slice of life anime. I either love it or they bore the ever loving hell out of me. I really did not expect to like this puppy as much as I did. It was honestly the breath of fresh air I needed to kick off the season. The story follows Iwakura Mitsumi, a fresh high school student who left her family, friends, and community to hit the big leagues in Tokyo and start on the path to becoming the leader she's always dreamed of. Her high school career starts off incredibly rocky as she gets lost on the way to school and has a full existential crisis meltdown. In her panic, she meets Sosuke Shima, your not-so-standard golden retriever himbo who helps her get to school. The series follows the two as they navigate their first year, their friendship, building their chosen family, and developing maybe something more between them. I cannot stress enough how much I adored this anime. While I was watching the spring season, my brother would ask me which anime I wanted to watch first, and my answer was always Skip and Loafer. It gave me so many serotonin boosts and had the ability to turn around some truly horrific days I've had in the past few months. I love the character of Mitsumi. She's such an adorable little burst of energy and really gave me some young Leslie Note vibes. Shima is also absolutely adorable and must be protected at all cost. His character development was also really intriguing and went places I was not expecting. Skip and Loafer also has some of the best LGBT plus representation I've seen all year that's beautifully heartfelt and wholesome. One of the characters close to the main character is somewhere under the trans non-binary gender queer umbrella and they did a really respectful job of just letting that character exist without making their gender identity a source of drama or tension. It was so refreshing and honestly added so much to the story. Another aspect of this anime that I loved is the name, Skip and Loafer. So literally every time me and my brother said the name, we automatically linked it to the Simpsons song, See My Vest which has the beautiful line, like my loafers, former gophers. So naturally, I had to make this mashup. I hope you enjoy, and you're probably not gonna be able to hear it the same after you hear the song. So sorry, not sorry, and you are welcome. Like my loafers, former gophers It was that who skinned my chauffeurs But a greyhound for tuxedo would be best To round things out, I loved this anime. Unlike other anime on this list, I really don't have anything bad or negative to say about it. I thought it was really well paced, had beautiful character development, and just made me happy. So I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. Up next is Hell's Paradise, which was a lot more divisive for me than I initially thought. This was the anime I was the most excited about this season, and it caught me off guard in ways I did not expect. Like this review of it, it was an absolute roller coaster for me. So my background knowledge on the series is limited to that one day I tried to read the manga, but it was way too gruesome, even for me. So I decided to drop it. That was one of the elements in the anime that kind of threw me off since you would think an anime would pull off that level of brutality better than the manga, but the manga was way more intense and honestly, I don't think that's a good thing. So let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Starting with the good. This anime is aesthetically stunning, just absolutely breathtaking. The monsters are weird and fucked up the dark aspects of this anime are just badass. Unfortunately for the first few episodes, those were the only solidly good aspects of this anime for me. I'm sorry, but the writing and the dialogue is terrible. It gets slightly better later on, but overall it is just not good. 
The dialogue is cliched and feels super stale, and the character interactions are awkward and forced. The characters are also completely flat with one-note personalities. I haven't seen a female main character written so badly since Naruto, and she's super annoying to boot. At least with Gabimaru, he has legit motivation. He's trying to receive a pardon so that he can go home and be able to finally live a peaceful life with his loving partner. Her motivation is literally just, I want to be the best executioner in the village and cut people's heads off perfectly. Like, what? She's so bland that she's almost killed off in episode 3 and I was absolutely begging for her to be taken out so I wouldn't have to listen to her one no motivation anymore. So that's how I felt about the first 3 to 4 episodes. What happened after that had me floored. I got consumed by Hell's Paradise and it swallowed me whole. We were getting to the 11th hour of me trying to get this video out on time, so I needed to binge like 9 episodes ASAP. I initially was going to break it down into a couple of viewings, but once I started, I literally could not put it down. I've never been more surprised by an anime turnaround. The way that this story takes off and builds to the climactic last minutes was astounding. The sheer amount of time and effort the author put into the lore and world building is outstanding. I went into this anime locked into the mindset after the first few episodes that this anime was nothing more than a beautiful and visually stunning hollow shell. I left absolutely speechless. This is one of those animes that reveals so much that it's going to get continuously better with each viewing. Super excited to rewatch this one giving Hell's Paradise a surprising 9 out of 10. Got recommended Dead Mount Death Play by Mother's Basement, but I didn't go into it with high hopes because it's isekai based, which is my least favorite genre. But this anime is amazing. There's a moment at the end of episode 1 that I did not see coming. It shifts everything and gives the story a very unique flair. Overall, it was a lot darker and more f***ed up than I was expecting, which was a very nice surprise. Going to get into some spoilers territory, so if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to here. The concept of reverse isekai is nothing new, but the concept of reverse isekai where it's revealed that the villain, not the hero, gets transported to a new world is one I haven't seen before. But from what I understand, this trope is becoming much more common these days. But I didn't know that because as stated above, I do not like isekai. In Dead Mount Death Play, our main character is the universally feared corpse god, whose reincarnation is immediately endangered by the overly enthusiastic assassin who thought she'd completed her job. Hijinks ensue and somehow Corpse God ends up teaming with the same group who was hired to take him out in the first place. This leads to some very intriguing character development as you watch these two opposing groups come together to unravel a multitude of mysteries. By the end of the anime, you start seeing that there's something sinister developing that links the two worlds together. It sets up the next part of the anime, which will be out in October, very nicely. I'm super excited to see where they end up taking it. Overall, this was a really well-paced, fun, and f***ed up anime that did a fantastic job pulling me in and getting me excited about the second part. Try to go into this one blind because it truly is one that gets exponentially better when you get to experience everything in real time. Giving Dead Mount Death Play a 8 out of 10. My Love Story with Yamada-kun at level 999 is an anime I would have skipped, but TikTok made me watch it. And that first episode was really good. And then it lost steam. A lot of steam. The story follows Akane Kinoshita, who was brutally dumped by her gamer boyfriend who met another woman on the same online game he got her into. In her grief, she goes to an IRL meetup for the game to try to win him back, but instead falls on her face. In the process, though, she meets Yamada, a professional gamer who helps play her pretend boyfriend in front of her ex. 
Throughout the series, they get closer and yada, 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 romance ensues. Sounds cute, right? At first, I was on board, but once the pacing started hurting, I found myself getting unbearably bored. Not a lot happens in each episode, and then the other shoe dropped. Yamada is in high school. Just why? I know that there's only a few year age gap, but she's in college and he starts out as a 17 year old minor. It's really not hard to write stories where adults aren't preying on minors. This aspect teamed up with my annoyance just wrecked the rest of the series. This is one that I had to force myself to keep up with because by episode 5, I was over it. To be completely honest, the only reason I didn't drop this one is because I'd already made this part of the video and started the outline so I didn't want to throw away all that work. So yeah, super boring anime, bad pacing, annoying characters, and an age gap that had a 20 year old following with a 17 year old minor. Only giving it a passing grade because it had a few cute moments. But other than that, gonna give this unfortunately hollow rom-com a 5 out of 10. Heavenly Delusion or Tengoku Daimakyo was one of the massive sleeper hits of the season. And I feel like even though it was recommended by some bigger names, most people still don't know about it. Everything from the animation and world building to the tightly written screenplay and character development kept me on the edge of my seat. Now, I'm a sucker for anything post-apocalyptic, so I was immediately drawn in. It follows a futuristic Japan decades after the great disaster which wiped out technology and shattered society back to the dark ages. Then you add in a wild sci-fi element and weird ass monsters and I was absolutely hooked. The screenplay is also built on layers upon layers that are slowly and expertly peeled back throughout the season. Even by the end, you have a decent idea of the general landscape, but they make you sit back and piece together your own conclusions. Heavenly Delusion is split into two stories. One is of our two main characters who are traversing across Japan and in search of elements that will make each of them understand who they are and maybe even answer some deeper seated mysteries about the great disaster. The other story follows a futuristic school in which highly intelligent students go about their daily lives while being shielded from the post-apocalyptic outside world. Each story builds into directions I did not see coming. So much so that after every few episodes, I had to stop to discuss what new discovery spelled out for the entirety of the overarching story. I will give a brief warning and spoiler here because I do think it's important to know before going in. The show is rated MA and in episode 12, there's a pretty intense essay scene that's really psychologically f***ed up. I was thankfully warned about it beforehand, but I don't want those, especially who have triggers around SA to get blindsided by it. Overall, this anime does have a lot of creepy and f***ed up moments that had my skin crawling. The body horror and gore in certain scenes absolutely shook me up, so please proceed with caution. Heavenly Delusion was easily one of the best anime of the season and one that deserves mainstream acclaim in my opinion. I also think that this anime has so much incredible potential for future seasons, especially with how this season left off. Highly, highly recommend this one, 9 out of 10. Ever wonder what Harry Potter would be like if he was a swole himbo who couldn't actually do magic but was just super strong? Enter Mashal, Muscles and Magic. It's honestly such a stupid anime, and I say that with the most love possible. Definitely one of the better comedy anime I've seen in a while, and had me laughing nearly every episode. The story is set in a magical world and follows a majestic himbo, Mashal, who despite his appearance, actually has no magic abilities. His adopted father, knowing he would be ostracized and reported to the government if found out, encourages Mashal to instead train like a bodybuilder. 
Hijinks ensue, and Mashal ends up attending the Hogwarts of the universe, where he has to work hard to make sure others don't find out that he can't actually do magic. Thankfully, he has superhuman strength that somehow has the ability to repel magic, so naturally everyone thinks he's a genius. Mashal is a simple boy. He just wants to be left alone with his family and eat cream puffs. Like, literally every episode. That's probably 90% of his whole personality. This anime is truly adorable and just so dumb. I do think that Mashal started off super strong and lost some steam halfway through. Once the pacing went to shit, even the final boss fights felt super rushed and underwhelming. Kinda disappointed at where it went, um, not really sure how much growth this anime will be able to have moving forward, especially at the rate it's going, but overall, I still mostly had fun watching it. The characters are charming and the story has so many fun callbacks to Harry Potter that if you're a fan of that series, you're gonna catch every single one and it's honestly such a joy to watch. At the end of the day, I truly adore our new bestest boy and favorite swole himbo, so we're gonna give Mashal a 7 out of 10. Oshinoko was definitely the one to watch this anime season. If you haven't already heard a million people talking and praising it, here's my account. So, first of all, Oshinoko is from the same mastermind Aka Akakase who created the masterpiece that is Kaguya-sama Love is War. I was originally going to read the manga before I watched this one, but thankfully due to my laziness, I never actually got around to it and therefore got to experience it in real time. I'm so happy that I did this. The first episode is 90 minutes long, which seems really daunting, but it is literally its own mini movie and it has a movie's worth of content and story building. The episode follows Ai, a 16-year-old idol as she traverses some really heavy life stuff. I'm not going to say anything more because this is one that you really need to experience on your own and it would honestly be a crime if I spoiled that for you. So I'm not going to say anything more about this plot, just, just watch it, okay? So getting into spoilers territory, uh, skip to here if you don't want to be spoiled because like I said, you need to watch this one in your own time. My biggest critique of the show are the two main characters, Aqua and Ruby. They are just not interesting compared to I. They have very little character development and are just really one note throughout the series. Aqua is blinded by his desperate need to get revenge and Ruby just wants to be an idol. My favorite episodes of the whole series were the ones that weren't about them. Compared to I, they just aren't interesting in my opinion. I really wish that they'd been more developed, but since it's Aka Akakase, I'm sure they're gonna have about 50 million layers developed throughout the rest of the series, so honestly, I'm not too worried about that. My other biggest gripe with this series was the lack of content warnings for episodes six and seven, which deal with unaliving. It was personally really, really triggering for me and I actually had to turn it off and skip episode 6 entirely. I did like this show, but mid-season it kind of felt hollow for me and really fell off. If all the episodes had been as good as the first one, this would have been the best anime of the year. No contest. It was a good enough start to the series, but I don't think it's as spectacular as everyone's claiming it to be. I do think it will get there though, but it was still good and to be honest, I'm really scared of this fandom, so I'm going to give this puppy an 8 out of 10. Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury is a continuation from the first half of the series which premiered in the fall 2022 anime season. This is my first Gundam series and honestly, it's one of the more perfect ones to start with to get introduced into the massive world that is Gundam. One day, I'm going to have to do a whole episode on the Gundam universe and how it actually saved the anime industry during the 70s. But until then, here's this. This edition in the cinematic universe that is Gundam was truly spectacular to watch. I should preface this by saying that I do not like mecha anime. It's not my thing and it's pretty cheesy in my opinion. But this, this was a revelation. 
Since it's Gundam, there's endless amounts of world building, character development upon character development, and so much space politics. Like, so much space politics. The witch from Mercury falls to Letta, a naive little bumpkin from Mercury who's able to attend one of the most prestigious academies in the galaxy. In this age of Gundam, all Gundam technology has been banned due to the, you know, the fact that they kill pilots slowly and painfully over time. This anime takes place around 20 years after those referendums were set in place. With the backdrop of a fun school year, this anime is anything but fun and calming. Yes, there are fluffy moments, but when the space politics kick in, this anime can get devastating and made me cry on multiple occasions. It's hard to describe the plot aspects since there's countless ones, so I'm not gonna even try to do that in this video. Just, just watch this show. Especially cause the witch from Mercury is super gay. Like gay characters, gay relationships, gay haircuts, gay. In comparison to the first core, which came out last year, this was probably the weaker of the two. Although there was definitely more things that happened this season, the pacing was just odd and felt kind of rushed by the end. This is one of those shows that if I could go back and do it again, I really wouldn't watch it week by week since there's an ungodly amount of important info every episode and I was forgetting stuff every single scene. I am excited to go back and binge both seasons so I can piece things together and understand it more as a whole. The Witch from Mercury is a wonderful anime with absolutely gorgeous animation. I'm really happy that this was my intro into the Gundam universe and I'm honestly super excited to watch more Gundam. So we're gonna give this puppy an 8 out of 10. Otaku Elf is a shining example of how bad a show can be if you break the screenwriting rule, show don't tell. The amount of flashbacks to scenes that sometimes happen even 30 seconds before was baffling. This was a hate watch. The terrible writing made it hilarious, but not enough that I finished it. Cause of that, I'm gonna give it a dropped out of 10. Cause just, just don't watch this one. I saved the best for last. Magical Destroyers is my favorite anime of the season. I cannot stress how much I adored this anime and how many friends I've gotten into it. The concept is batshit insane and just worked so well. It follows an alternate reality where Japan decides to deal with the declining birth rate by outlawing everything otaku and arresting or as they like to call it protecting otaku. The story starts three years into the regime in a war torn Shibuya. Literally, they bombed Shibuya. But through endless battles, a group of radicalized otaku have retaken that part of the city. Our main character is called Otaku Hero, because of course he is. And he's joined by his three real-life magical girls, Blue, Pink, and Anarchy. They all work together to fight back against the government and win back their rights. The brilliant aspect of this whole anime is the rest of Japan is totally fine and going on like nothing happened. But Shibuya is war-torn post-apocalyptic. The level of stupidity and insanity is incredible. When I say this anime is stupid, I mean it. This anime is stupid, but it knows it and leans into it so hard that the absurdity makes it an absolute masterpiece. My favorite kind of anime are the ones that go absolutely batshit, balls to the walls, stupid as hell, and scream, only an anime could pull this off. For example, my favorite anime ever is FLCL. This anime is like if FLCL and Kill a Kill had a baby. It's amazing and honestly would have gotten a 10 out of 10, but there's a scene in episode four where a minor is realized that made me scream at my TV in disgust and disappointment. I also don't know how I feel about the ending it was really messy and I don't think I actually like how it panned out. However, given the rest of the show, this ending fits perfectly and makes total sense. I was really hoping this was going to be a one and done season, but I could see it open for a second season. 
But I could also see it just ending like this with the final message backing up the thesis of the show. Magical Destroyers is messy in general, but that's what makes it so much fun. It's an absolute shit show. Other than those aspects, this anime is pretty damn near perfect and has hands down the best OP of the entire year. That's truly insane, bizarre, and wonderful. Magical Destroyers gets an unofficial 10 out of 10, but because of that scene, 8 out of 10. To wrap things up, overall, I was pretty happy with this anime season. My highlights were definitely Magical Destroyers, Hell's Paradise, Heavenly Delusion, and Skip and Loafer. Ones I wish would have been better were the continuation of The Witch from Mercury, Mashal, and Oshinoko. I do think there was a lot more good than bad, and the amazing was truly next level. So here are my official rankings. Thank you so much for sticking around, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,